All right, so in this breakdown, I want to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo and the passing offense in the first half. So after the game, you would have thought that Jimmy Garoppolo was not going to play for any time soon, just based on his emotion. And then Kyle Shanahan said that it was a calf contusion and Jimmy will be reevaluated come Wednesday and he might even play on Sunday. So who knows? But what I do know is the offense in the first half was not good. After the first drive, I want to talk about some of the plays that I think the 49ers could use that they had some success on, whether it was first drive in the first half, if Trey Lance does end up suiting up. And I want to start with the very first play of the game. So uh, let's just talk about it. Let's get right into it. Very first play, double slant to the top of the screen from your two best receivers. And this is a snag combination to the bottom of the screen. And it's a very creative way to get to this. So you're going to have George Kittle. Kyle Juszczyk and Trey Sermon in a three-man concept. Kittle is going to run to the corner. Juszczyk is going to run curl route, and they're going to use Sermon as their flat player. And let's just watch it play out, and then I'm going to rewind it and tell you exactly who Jimmy is supposed to read here. Um, very simple concept, one-on-one, -on -one, but it should be easy for even a rookie like Trey Lance to read. So uh, depending on what he does, you are going to know where to go with the football. And they even drop a guy to the flat right here. So basically, if he hesitates, if he gets any sort of depth, sinks, throw the ball to your curl route. That happens, hits use check. All right, later on in the drive, another high-low concept where they're just using a motion player. This time, it's Debo Samuel. He's going to come in motion to hold your underneath defenders. It's going to be play action. And again, this is something that they can do with Trey Lance. Watch how... The linebacker holds right here. George Kittle does a really nice job of settling down. Jimmy finds him. Easy pitch and catch. Just rewind it real quick. And this is nothing complex. You would think that Lance would be able to execute this. Go to the end zone view real quick just to see um, Trey Sermon in pass protection because this is a way to keep him on the field. If you can pass block, you can play. Gets just enough. Jimmy gets it off. Easy first down. All right, so this is a touchdown pass from Jimmy G where he does a great job of putting the ball where only his receiver can make a play, giving his guy a chance, also hanging in the pocket and, you know, not really wavering under pressure. I thought he did a good job of that on this play. So the 49ers are going to have six men protecting, five up front, and then George Kittle. Watch how Kittle blocks the edge rusher here. Uh, not many tight ends can do this. So, you know, it, the good news is it's a touchdown and it's a great play. Uh, the ball is exactly where it needs to be. Jimmy, again, watch how he just hangs in there and just kind of delivers a strike. The bad news is when they have six men protecting against four rushers, there's no freaking way that your quarterback should get hit on this play. And, of course, it happens, unfortunately, thanks to Alex Mack right in your face up the middle there. Dime, but... He shouldn't be getting hit there. All right, these next two throws from Jimmy are no, no, no. Please do not. The first, this first one is going to be over the middle. Debo Samuel is going to just come over here, sit down in between the two defenders. The pass is high. It sells. Comes off as like a hospital ball. Debo has taken some licks on a lot of these type of targets this, uh, this season. And he shouldn't have to go through this type of hits. So watch it from the end zone view here. Good protection. No play action. Just misses him high. Watch it. Rewind it here. Ball gets out. Man. All right, this next throw is the interception from Jimmy G. He does a good job at first. So he's going to come up here and he's going to see Muhammad Sanu is running a curl. Bobby Wagner is going to buzz out to the flat and take that curl away. Jimmy does a good job of getting to a second progression which is going to be George Kittle coming over the middle here. Defensively, Seattle's in a cover two. This cornerback has a flat. This cornerback has a flat. They do a good job of disguising it because, you know, you see single high, you're probably thinking it's not going to be a cover two. But we're in the NFL. The NFL has been doing this for years where most of the time, if it is a single high, they spin to some type of cover two shell post snap. So Jamal Adams to the bottom, he's going to be a deep half player right here. The safety or the slot player right here is going to spin to this deep half with Quandre Diggs 
is going to be the middle hole player. He's going to be robbing any in-breaking routes, and he's just going to read the quarterback's eyes, and he does a really good job of that. Again, Jimmy does has good process. At first, you'll see a play out here. Wants to go to the curl, sees that's taken, goes back to Kittle. Right process, but before you throw it to Kittle here, as he gets back here, he has to check for this other defender coming here. He does not. Remember last game against the Packers, if you go back to my video from last week, uh, there were a few throws where Jimmy just didn't see that other defender coming. This is not a new issue for Jimmy G, and that is, you know, just unfortunate at this stage of his career where he's not seeing the field. And it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon because we're seeing these same mistakes over and over again. So here we go, end zone view. It's just easy pitch and catch. So it seems like when the 49ers make one mistake, the other mistake starts to snowball and they cannot get out of their own way. So on this play, it is a, it looks like it's going to be a bubble to Debo and they actually have numbers. They have two on two and then he's the extra guy. He's not going to be in the play and you'll take the one on one with Debo every time. They are going to fake the bubble to Debo and Sanu is going to run off and so is Kittle. The play is not there. And of course you'd like to see Jimmy G get rid of the ball, but Lakin Thompson does not block his guy, and because of that, unblocked defender, Jimmy takes a sack. Maybe you want Jimmy to throw the ball as soon as you can see, you know, both of those go routes are covered, but he has no time to make a decision there. Let's look at it from the end zone view to see what Lake and Tomlinson is seeing. See the protection rules. How many people do the Seahawks end up bringing? So they're bringing five. 49ers have enough to block it. Sermon does a good job of chipping. This is all on Thompson, I believe. These three are going to account for the three Seahawks defenders. Take the inside guy because that is the quickest threat to the quarterback. Thompson doesn't do it and sack. Takes him out of field goal range. All right, so this play is really all on Jimmy G and in a good way because he goes full Houdini. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, they get an unblocked free rusher from here, and Jimmy spins out of it. And then he does a great job of giving, whether it's George Kittle, whether it's Brandon Ayuk, a chance to make a play here, but the 49ers have bad luck. Two receivers in the same area. They break up the pass, which should have been a big completion. You'll see it. Let's rewind it here. Um, watch his reaction, Kyle Shanahan. He knows it. Knows he had one. Great play by Jimmy to avoid the rush. Again, more pass protection issues. I'm not sure who this is on. I'm not sure if so they're sliding one way and nobody picks them up. And there's there's no real hot route here either, but oh man. They are going to be kicking themselves by watching that play. Or sorry, that's Charlie Warner. I thought it was Kittle. Still. Your own teammate shouldn't be breaking up your pass. Whether that's how you whether that's Warner. Scramble drill rules should not have two receivers in the same area. All right, this is a trick play and one that I just did not understand at all. The 49ers offense, they were rolling. Up until this point, they're averaging seven yards a play. They were in rhythm. They were in sync. And after this play, I believe it was 17 plays for 32 yards for the rest of uh, the half. They did not get anything going in. I think a lot of that is due to just this play taking them out of rhythm. It's the execution. It, just, it was such a big ask for, first of all, Somebody you just signed on the street. George Kittle, who who runs this trick play, was just, you guys remember when Jimmy threw it high, he came down, landed awkwardly, looked like Kittle was going to miss a bunch of time, somehow got up, not sure how, but he does not do a good job on this play. I don't think he should have been running this route based on what just happened. However, he's a machine, Kittle looks fine, but let's just walk through it. Uh, the timing, everything about the play seemed off. It was just going to be a lot to ask as far as execution goes. Great catch there by Jimmy, but I mean, by the time Kittle's one-on-one -on -one um, down the field against Jamal Adams, uh, not much he can do there. What I, why I think it was on Kittle is, uh, let's take a look here. All right. So you're going to sell the route and you have to sell the route. So look at where he is by the time Kittle has to slow down. He has to slow play this so much more because Patrick hasn't even released the ball yet. And he's running down the field. By now, Kittle should still be right here, still selling it. That's Adams. Because if he does, Adams may make, may take a couple more steps here. Maybe he goes to Jimmy 
And the route concept's there, so Kittle should be open. But look at the difference in yardage by the time Jimmy's on the 25-yard line. Kittle's going to the opposite 35. By the time he releases it, this play just really didn't stand a chance. It was a good job by Jamal Adams sniffing out the play, but uh, just didn't really have much of a chance from the start. I mean, you can say it was a great play by Jamal Adams, but I don't think Kittle did a good job of selling the route, and that kind of doomed the play. I actually don't mind Jimmy throwing it up here and giving him a chance. Could have been P.I. Yeah, sure, but I don't think they're going to call that. All right, these last four throws that I'm going to show are pretty much what happened to Brandon. Where is he at? Why are you not throwing him the ball? And I don't know what's going on behind closed doors, but something is up with number 11 because uh, it's pretty inexcusable just about his either lack of usage or him not being on the sidelines or not being on the field on third down, on downs where you know you need yards. So here, the 49ers just going to run something very simple. They get Ayuk. It's third down on a slant. The ball is late. The ball does not get to him. Just going to let it play here. Uh, the 49ers only converted one first down in the first half, one first down in the second half. That is not going to cut it. He's there. And actually, earlier in the game, they ran the same route concept, just with a backside slant where he's isolated. And sure, there's a, you know, Juszczyk's going to run a route that clears out, you know, this guy. And it ends up giving a really, really big throwing window for IU. But what I meant when earlier in the game about Debo, Debo actually runs this route, and Jimmy throws it on time. It looks like he looks to Ayuk here. He's trying to hold the safety. I don't know who, why he's trying to hold the safety there, but knowing what your matchups, go to your best matchup on third down, get it out of your hands quickly. Does not happen. Ayuk's open there. Open, 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 open. Late, behind, third down, punt. Good protection up front. Let's see where Jimmy's head is from this angle because... I was not sure what he was reading. Not sure what he's looking at. Glances left. Yeah, you just have to take the matchup there. Got to take your best matchup in this scenario. And you'll see on the next drive, or sorry, on the very next play, don't have this type of luxury. So great release, great route, open. All right, this is a stick concept. Every team in the NFL runs it. Every team in college, every team in high school, middle school, peewee, you name it. So what's going to happen is George Kittle is going to run up. He's going to settle down. He's actually going to run a turn route outside. Debo's going to run an out route. Mohamed um, Sanu's going to run off. To the bottom of the screen, Kyle Juszczyk's going to run to the flat. And Trent Sherfield is going to run a curl. Nobody is open on this play. Third down, Brent Ayuk is not on the field. Why? I do not know. Um, but... Getting open, creating separation, that has been an issue the last couple of games against teams that are playing man coverage against the 49ers. When you struggle to get open against man coverage, you would think you would rely on your first round wide receiver. But he was not on the field for a, a handful of money downs. And there's nowhere for Jimmy to throw the ball there because nobody's open. So because of that, the offense has to punt. Again, protection is there. He has plenty of time to read the field. Scan the field, go through multiple progressions. Throws a bit behind Kittle, but I wouldn't put that on Jimmy just because he's not really getting open there. All right, another third down, another play without Brandon Ayuk on the field. Again, not sure what is going on. Cell route, cell concept to the bottom of the screen. Juwan Jennings is in right now at Z. He's going to run up, and he's going to act like he's going in and then bend it back to the corner. George Kittle is going to run to the flat, and then he's going to return back to the middle. To the top of the screen, Kyle Juszczyk, who they are relying on a lot. And as you can see on this route, he's against Bobby Wagner one-on-one. -on -one. If this was maybe Mostert or somebody with just a little more speed, he's going to run up. He's going to act like he's going out, give him a little head fake, cut across the middle. What looks like a Texas route just from this alignment. And then they're going to high-low him. So Trent Sherfield is going to come up and in. Let's just watch it play out again. Nobody is open. Jimmy does what he can. The Seahawks are just playing cover two right now. Or sorry, two man. So two high safeties right here. And Jamal Adams is just going to read the quarterback. And he doesn't even, you know, respect Juwan Jennings going deep here. So he knifes over and almost gets another interception. But 
Uh, nobody's getting separation. Nobody's getting open. And again, where is the first round draft pick? Especially on third down, especially knowing you're going to have five receivers out in the route. Why doesn't, why can't I run this route? Why can't I run this route? Why can't he run this route? Why can't he run this route? Third down, no Debo, no IU. That is a mistake. That is a coaching problem. Can't blame Jimmy there. Again, good protection from the offensive line. There is plenty of time, but nobody is creating separation, which has been an issue and continues to be an issue. Don't mind him giving his guy a chance there, but not much else. All right, so I believe this is a dagger concept to the bottom of the screen. Debo Samuel back in the game. Another third down. I believe this is the final third down of the first half. So Debo's going to run up and run a dig, a dig route. George Kittle is just going to run his man off. Again, Seattle's in two-man coverage, so two high safeties, and then everybody else underneath is in man coverage. And then Juszczyk is going to come to the flat. The design up here is really nice, so... Mohamed Sanu is in the flat. He's just going to, sorry, is in the slot as a number two receiver on the ball. He's going to run to the flat. And that creates a giant window for Brandon Ayuk DJ versus DJ Reed one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Jimmy has to pick a side here. I'm taking the Brandon Ayuk every day of the week. He does not choose that side. But as you can see, I believe it's third and eight, third and ten. Brandon Ayuk open right there. Instead, we are throwing to a fullback. On third and ten, and when I say that, that's no slight to Kyle Juszczyk. I'm saying you drafted a first-round receiver to use him for these downs, to get open. You shouldn't be relying on your running back, quote-unquote fullback, out of the backfield on return routes against Bobby Wagner to move the chains. I don't like the read here. I understand that Jimmy does have to pick a side. He glances over to see what's going on to the top of the screen, but... Oh man, I'm taking a, I'm taking my guy one on one all day. Doesn't get there. Short of the first down, 49ers have to punt. And that was the story pretty much all half where yards are being left on the field, whether it's from Jimmy, whether it's from receivers not getting open, whether it's from just them making mistakes, not being able to get out of their own way. But uh, the first half was very frustrating to watch. And I know Jimmy suffered from a calf injury, but uh, th there was just a lot of negative play and uh, that's why maybe if he's healthy, we'll see number five in.